Good morning. It's exciting to be here. My colleagues and I at Summit Public Schools are huge fans and followers of the Lean Startup, and so it's an honor to be helping kick things off this morning. Perhaps that's the best place to start because I did say public schools, and I suspect if we were playing a word association game and I said Lean Startup, you would not say public school. Any of you? Yeah. Um, and rightfully so, since public schools in America are the opposite of startups, and they're designed to hold the status quo with guaranteed customers and guaranteed revenue even when you're losing your customers. Some at public schools are a little different, actually a lot different, because we're charter schools. Charter schools are public schools, but with the expressed intent of innovating, creating new products and services in an industry where, let's face it, my grandmother, actually my great-grandmother, could walk into my son's classroom today and feel right at home because not much has changed. Charter schools also operate in under conditions of extreme uncertainty. I won't go into it here, but let's suffice it to say both our customers, which are students, and our revenue are extremely hard-earned. Ten years ago, I launched our first school, and following were at the at the time the following were really well-established facts. Most public students in America aspire to go to college yet only one quarter of them are eligible to attend or even apply when they finish high school. And the number one reason is that they don't complete the right required coursework. The number one factor within the control of a school determining if a student completes their coursework is the quality of a teacher. And so our first school design centered completely on ensuring that every single student enrolled in a com and completed a really rigorous set of courses that exceeded entrance requirements. We focused completely on designing a school that ensured that every single student had a high-performing teacher every single period of every day. Our mission was clear. Create a public high school that got 100%, not the 24% that averages our public high schools in America, but 100% of our students accepted to a four-year college. I'd love to tell you that I understood lean principal startups then. The truth is, for many years, I was pretty proud of the fact that the model I designed and built didn't require much tweaking at all. And four years later, yes, four long years later, we graduated our first class of students, and 98% of them were accepted to a four-year college. If you were a poor or minority student, you were eight times more likely to graduate from my school accepted to a four-year college than if you went to the local public school. We were celebrated for the success, named by Newsweek and US News as among the top public high schools in America. We had seven applicants for every one seat. We were featured in the film Waiting for Superman, and people began begging us to open schools. And we also raised a lot of money. And then, four years later, eight full years later after we started, less than half of those students actually graduated from college. What's interesting about that is nothing bad actually happened. In fact, quite the opposite. Even with only half graduating, we were still doubling the national average, and we were still among the best in the country. However, internally, we were pretty clear that it took us eight years to figure out that the product we designed and built only delivered half of the value we intended, and that was a totally unacceptable outcome. An eight-year cycle was ridiculously long. We had to shorten it to know if we were making progress much more quickly. We're dealing with kids' lives. We tried to look at why our students weren't making it through college, but honestly, we came back to what virtually every single teacher comes back to at the end of every single year. If we could just teach them a little bit more, a little bit better, we could get there. To this end, we designed a new math program, again, by all appearances, innovative. We partnered with the Khan Academy, we leveraged technology, and after 10 months, it was working. Kids were learning more math and learning at a faster rate than their peers across the country. The New York Times wrote an article, and we raised a whole bunch more money. But we weren't actually sure which element led to kids learning more math. Was it the Khan Academy? Was it because every student was working on exactly what they needed to work on? Was it because we assessed them four times a year? Or was it because they were just doing more math? And then we discovered the Lean Startup. All right, maybe slightly dramatic, but in fact, a number of us in the organization were reading the Lean Startup and realizing that we didn't have a principled and disciplined approach to innovation that allowed us to build, measure, and learn rapidly. In May, six months ago, Summit Public Schools committed to behaving like a Lean Startup. 
we, just started, we decided to start with a relatively small batch of students for only one third of their school day and in only one subject. Our hypothesis, driven by our vision, is that if students can learn to own and drive their own learning, if they determine their personal path and pace towards achieving the goals they set for themselves, they will be successful. We had just shy of three months to build our MVP because pushing the ship date in education isn't an option. Kids actually show up on the first day, rather if you're ready or not. And as we know, there's one simple rule in building your MVP. Remove any feature, process, or effort that does not contribute directly to the learning you seek. This is where things started getting a little bit crazy because we actually started removing walls, the walls between classrooms, literally. Because if, in order to test if kids can own their own learning, and if that leads them to actually learn more, better, the right things, the whole concept of school has to be turned upside down. Think about it. Schools are organized around teachers. Teachers set one pace, they give direction, they control movement, they give feedback, they do everything and kids just follow along. To test our hypothesis, we needed kids to do everything and for teachers to be there to provide the support and resources to ensure that they could. So here's what we did. We built an online math guide that shows everything a student needs to know from kindergarten through high school. We assessed every student to, term, to determine exactly what they knew, and then we made them a personalized version of the guide. Green means you know it, yellow means you're ready to learn it, and red means it's out of reach right now. We built online playlists to go with each of the concepts on the guide. The playlists are just as you might imagine. They're a playlist, a collection of experiences, every single thing we can curate from the Khan Academy exercises and videos to online textbooks to games to assignments our teachers have created and even person in-person lectures and lessons on the topics. And we created an online on-demand testing system that allows students to show exactly what they've learned and get immediate feedback on it. If they can show they learned a concept, it turns green. That was our MVP. We welcomed the kids into a big open architecture room with long tables and individual workspaces that looks a lot more like a high-tech startup than a school and gave every single student a computer, showed them the tools we built and said go. We committed to empirically testing our predictions to validate our learning. We knew we needed very short, week-long build, measure, learn cycles within the context of the longer year product cycle. This was extremely important to us for many reasons. One of the most important being if something went terribly wrong, and in our case, when something goes terribly wrong, it means a student's not learning, we couldn't wait too long before we did something to fix it. We were extremely rigorous in selecting our metrics, ensuring that we could capture and report them daily. We focused on two fundamental measures. One, did kids learn math? Could they actually show that they learned something they didn't know when the day began? And two, to what degree did they drive their own learning, make decisions and engage in behaviors that led to learning? I wanna pause here for just a moment because these might seem like really obvious and you might be thinking, isn't this what every single school and teacher is doing on a, a daily basis, measuring if kids learned what they were supposed to be learning and what teachers were teaching them? Sadly, even the very best schools in America and even those attempting to add value add measures are still using vanity metrics. They simply aren't rigorously measuring where each student begins and where they end in a short learning cycle and then confronting the hard truths and, the, and what the data reveal. If learning did occur, is it a direct result of what the teacher did and specifically what part of what the teacher did? Or is it because of what mom, dad, a tutor, or even Salcon did? We've been vigilant about collecting user feedback. We ask every single student for feedback on a weekly basis. We conduct in-depth focus groups each week, and we collect observable behavior data every single day. And let me tell you, teenagers embrace this. I get little emails with the subject line, user feedback. I'd like to tell you about something I think you could improve. This entire data package drives our weekly experiments. A cross-functional team meets weekly and communicates daily. We start with the data and we really honestly look at where we are and iterate rapidly to move closer to ide our ideal, always keeping the bigger eight-year goal in clear view. 
We've made more iterative progress in 14 week-long cycles than we have in 10 year-long cycles. In delivering a product that we know for certain enables kids to learn something they don't know when the day starts. Let me give you an example. Remember, I told you that on the playlist for learning, one of the items was a lecture offered by a teacher on a topic essentially a 20 to 30 minute introduction by a teacher explaining and teaching the concept. These were offered throughout the period in breakout rooms, off the big learning space, and kids were free to go to them as they chose. After our first week, when we looked at the data of which students learned, we predicted that those who hadn't were probably highly correlated to those who didn't attend the lecture. And so we began several weeks of experimenting. The next week, we tracked lecture participation to learning data, and we discovered that students attended the lectures were no more or less likely to pass an assessment than those who didn't. Teachers predicted if they knew who was coming to the lectures and their questions, they could better, better prepare, and it would make a difference. And so we tested, and still no difference. This went on for several cycles with, without the performance data changing. But interestingly, something else was changing. Fewer and fewer students were going to the seminars. Across the user feedback, a clear message was emerging. Lectures aren't timely when I want to learn. They aren't customized, exactly what I need to learn. They aren't personalized. I don't get help with exactly what I need to learn. Interestingly, as attendance had dwindled to two or three kids per, sem per lecture, we saw a bounce in the user satisfaction and the correlation between attending and learning because teachers essentially were throwing their plan out the window and just tutoring kids. And so the tutoring bar was born. Yep, you guessed it, just like the genius bar. Right in the middle of the big room, highly visible and accessible. Students are encouraged to frequent in as often as they need. We continue to experiment to discover the optimal impact on learning. What is most notable in this example is not that we started a tutoring bar, although it's, it's kind of cool, but rather that, that we stopped giving lectures. If not for the rigorous assessment and short build measure learn cycles with data that was accessible, actionable, and auditable, and trust me, it got audited a lot, we would still be spending an extraordinary amount of teacher time and energy on lectures and wasting a really valuable resource, our most valuable resource. This decision cuts so closely to the core of who a teacher is, what they thought their job was, and how they perceived they were adding value it would have been impossible to make a, it without clear and indisputable evidence. But with it, each of these teachers who is so committed to our bigger vision and our eight-year goal moved to higher value behaviors without a lot of resistance. I'm afraid I've started telling you a story that doesn't yet have an ending, one that is far more rich and complex than I can share in 12 minutes. But if we've caught your interest, if you have something to share, or want more to learn more, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, track our progress on the blog, Blend My Learning, or pay us a visit. We're right here in the Bay Area. Thanks so much.